Once upon a time, not long ago, I went on this date with this guy named... It's no accident that sounds like you're leveling up in a video game. 48% of 18 to 29 year olds have an online dating profile. Make them work for it. 45% of people say they're more frustrated with this form of dating than hopeful. There are so many people you can connect with. Should I swipe right? Swipe wrong. Swipe wrong. Setting the record straight on dating apps. Everyday people telling everyday stories of the swipe right world with your host, Chaos. Well, I know he had a good time. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night. You know what time it is. You know how we are. You know what we're doing. Actually, I'm leaning way over too far if you're watching on YouTube. So... How you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you for asking. We are the number one podcast amongst tree huggers who are not quite ready to go all the way with them. We're like tree holds handsers or tree kick you in the shinners or however high schoolers or grade schoolers flirt. Um, so this this intro is, is set up for both the uh, YouTube channel as well as just the regular podcast. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel, Take a look, see it? Oh, that's how you know you're here. The gear is here. The gear is here. Kind of happy about the gear. It's cozy too. Kind of, it's, it's like a glove. Uh, we're going through season three. Well into season three, almost done with season three. As a matter of fact, this was going to be the last episode of season three, but uh, you know how we got to end every year. We got to end every year with a threesome episode. So that'll be forthcoming too here in the next couple of weeks. Going a little bit longer, I believe, in 10 episodes is, is how we're looking at this one. So how we doing? Everybody doing outstanding? How you enjoying the, the season so far? This one, like when I was recording and sending them to Jay, it's, it's, that's, so peek behind the curtain, that's what happens is uh, usually I'll do the interviews. Uh, or I'll, I hate to call it that because it's really just a conversation I'm having with somebody. I hate to call it an interview. There's no interrogation. There's just here to get people's story and let them tell it in, in the best way that, that they want to, whether they want to drop 15 F-bombs like I enjoy doing or uh, if they just want to tell it however they want to. And then I just say, here you go, Jay. And then Jay gets to go in totally cold and he's like, oh, my God, I can't believe that she asked to, he asked her to do the laundry or, oh, my God, I can't believe she wanted to peg him. I mean, things like that. Just like you're like, ah, so it's kind of funny to get his reaction later on. Usually, uh, usually uh, he'll do two or three in a row and get him get them sound sounding awesome. I can't talk. See, it's a lot of work to get me sounding good. I can't even I can't even use sentences anymore. So uh, this one was a lot of fun. Uh, this is this is what we're getting a lot of lately. We're getting, you know, a lot of people that we've never met before uh, who are like, hey, I got a story for you. Hey, come talk to me. Like, heck, yeah, I want to come talk to everybody. I want everybody's story. Uh, and that's how this one kind of played out. So it's I think it's a little bit shorter. Um, and uh, she was awesome. Awesome. I mean, like, if you don't know me already, you know that most of the people uh, I get to have these interactions with are awesome because really there's just so many good people out there who are having some uh, just, I don't know, horrible experiences or a couple of great experiences. This one was not one of the great ones. So, uh, you know, and pretty, pretty awesome girl, like I said, and beautiful, too. So you guys will enjoy the YouTube feed when you get to take a look at that. So you can go on to the YouTube channel where all the episodes are posted either in uh, some sort of format or another. And the cartoons that uh, Jay AIs them together, which is God, he does such a good job. It's so great. It's so great to work with such a, a such a good talent, amazing talent like that. He makes my mediocrity look amazing. Ah, so let me stop. Let me just let me just shut up, you know, sit back, relax, put your feet up, grab your popcorn, get it buttered, throw some caramel in there if you want to uh, shake it up, stir it. If you want to grab a Coke, that's all good. I haven't said the grab a Coke, grab a Coke, your adult refreshment, whatever you like when you are enjoying your uh, entertainment. And uh, if you're in traffic, you know, please don't hit that person next to you. And, to, and, and easy for me to say, enjoy size matters disclaimer the views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions or any entities they represent this podcast is about dating experiences it is not to say one dating app 
is better or worse than another. How, how long have you roughly were, were you on the apps or have been on the apps? So I was on the app, I want to say back when I was in college. Okay. So if we can like give like a, like an estimate, right? I'm 26 years old. Okay. Proudly. And so I started dating apps when I left for college, officially transferred out. And I was like 20, 21 years old. Okay. And I was enjoying them for a while. I used Tinder and I used Bumble. But the story that I'm going to talk about comes from a Tinder date. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. So it was college. It was, and, and we'll get there. It was college and it was just like, Hey, I'm living my best life. Let's meet. Let's have good times. Let's, I want to try all the restaurants I possibly can. Things like that. I assume. Yes. Because yeah. when you're in college, like well, at least when I was in college, uh -huh. it was really popular to ask someone to show you around, especially if you're new. So I'm originally okay. from El Paso and I transferred okay. out to, to Denton, the university of North Texas. Okay. And so when you go on dates, what you want is for the person to show you around, to give you like exclusives of the city that you're in. Uh -huh. And that's what I was trying to do. But in this Perfect. case, the guy was doing it to me and what? I see it now. And it was just, uh, it, it's, it's a great story. It, it's, it's a really, it's, it just goes like fire after fire, after another fire, oh flame after goodness. flame after flame of just of just how, so this was so this was a quite a few years ago then and it just kind of was like yes, oh my I god i can't believe so okay all right so go for it like this sounds like uh, like uh, usually i'll wait a little bit but i don't think i can wait anymore like this sounds like you and i've emailed about it a little bit and i'm like i'm really looking forward to this one so you met him on you said tinder i think right yes all right all right so i will shut up and just listen i won't do what most men do i will just listen nah <laughs> Okay, so once upon a time, not long ago, I went on this date with this guy named Jonathan. He was supposedly in the baseball team, and we matched, and I thought he was really attractive. What really caught me, um, like, in the motion with him was the fact that he was an athlete and the fact that he said he was 5'11". <laughs> so... And he said he was like Hispanic, like Latino, or something like that. Okay. So I was like, oh, okay, this is like, this is great. This is like totally my type. Okay. So we match and we're talking, and he seems like a great guy with a great personality, great sense of humor. Like we're 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 pretty getting along very well. And so finally he asks me out on a date and he says, let's meet at the Denton Square. And I said, perfect. So the Denton Square, and just to give you like a background, is a, think of it like the downtown. So it has like all of the, the trendy old school at the same time restaurants. And it's, it's basically where we all meet. There's meetings there and it, there's a tree lighting there during the holidays. Nice. It's the place to be when you're new, you know, yeah, that's, that's sounds the awesome. trending thing. Yeah. Yes. So then I said, perfect. Let's meet at the square. And I didn't know he was that new in town. So I tell him, let's meet at the square. There's like this great coffee shop. And then across from it, there's like this burger joint. And so he said, oh, yeah, that's perfect. Blah, 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 whatever. So I get there and I'm thinking, actually, no, I don't get there. This is like before I'm getting ready. Right. It's oh. around fall. It's cute cuddle season. Right. Oh, sure. OK. <laughs> so I'm thinking. So I'm thinking, you know what? This is because it's Texas. So I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to bust out my my boots, you know? I'm going to bring out my my little booties and stuff like that. And it's it's going to be cute. So I was rocking these jeans. I was rocking like this this shirt at the time that was cool to have half like that and it was like wobbly. I don't even I'm trying to give a good description of what I was wearing. <laughs> no, Hair was done, perfect. makeup done, and the booties, listen, had a heel. And I measured it. It's a 3-inch heel. I'm 5'5". Five five. Okay. I thought Five plus three is eight. I'm going to be five, eight. This guy is five, 10, right? So... <laughs> I love where this is going. It's going to be good. Okay. So I go to the coffee shop and I'm waiting there for a while. Red flag number one, he comes yeah. late. Yeah. And so I'm waiting there and I'm, I'm being optimistic about it because I really like the conversation that we had. And so the person that I am now, I would not, right? 26 year old sure. me would not tolerate that but sure. i was 21 young and yeah. optimistic okay. right yeah 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 full of teenage optimism sort of and just unicorns and fairy dust i get it absolutely 
exactly. <laughs> so essentially, I'm waiting there for, for for like a while. And then finally he messages me. He's just like, hey, I'm here, whatever. He pulls up and he's walking towards the coffee shop. And oh God. Oh, I no. stand up. And I'm towering over him. <laughs> it's taller, it's taller, it's taller. He's right here. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, hi, how are you? And he's like, oh, good, how are you? Oh, my God. How tall do you think he was? I was, okay, no, 5'4". Five, 5'4". Five, four. Five, four. He had oh. to be like 5'4 five, or 5'5 five, five because it just... I was only wearing three inches like of a heel. Oh, it doesn't make it doesn't add up. The math was not math. And when he said he was 5'10, 5'11, it just wasn't. So then finally we get there and I'm walking next to him and we're talking. It's a little bit of an awkward conversation, you know, typical, whatever. Mm -hmm. We get to the restaurant, we sit down, and honestly, the conversation was great. One thing I do remember about him was that he said his favorite hobby because we were talking about that small talk what are your favorite hobbies one of his favorite hobbies was to on purpose make situations awkward and then i said well how do you do that and then he taught me how to do it okay. it was fun it was a lot of fun I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you that part was fun i do remember okay. that him. okay so he said that in order for you to make a conversation awkward you have to stay quiet and you have to do like this thing with your mouth so for example if you make a comment and you say for example Oh, you look great today. And then I'll go. <laughs> That's what he said he likes to do on purpose. Okay. Okay. So Different type of hobby. Okay. I get it. It's unique. It's unique. So then whatever. We're having a great time. And I remember going to the restroom, excusing myself to go to the restroom. And I'm looking at myself and I'm like, I don't know, man. This is he's he's kind of weird, but he's really fun. He's he's has he has a unique personality. So I'm like, okay, let's just give it a go. We don't ditch in the middle of the yeah, day. Like, yeah. Pull, Irish pull, goodbye. Pull, 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 pull. Yeah. So then essentially I come back and whatever. We have a great rest of the night. We order, we eat, it's a fun night. And then he wants to continue with the date. And I'm like, dinner's over, you know? I'm kind of done. But he said, no, no, no. Let's explore. I want to see more of the city. I'm new. Red flag number, like, what, seven at this <laughs> yeah. point? He yeah, you're at checkered me. flags now, I think. Yeah. <laughs> he wants me to give him a tour of the city. So I'm just like, whatever. Let's <laughs> let's go ahead and do it. So right. we go. We walk around. And I take him to this place called Fry Street. Fry Street is located in front of call of, of the college, the University of North Texas. And mm -hmm. this this it's like an old antique, you know, use the bartenders. They have like this hipster beard with like the, the mustache. They're wearing beanies, flannel stuff, you know, very casual, very hipster. Look, oh, well, kind of like the thing you have going on right oh, now. Oh, yeah. OK. You know, All right. Cool. I'm very, very hipster. hipster yeah. Very, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a hipster thing. Uh -huh. So we go. And we have a good time. We don't drink because I told him I'm not going to do that on the first date. He said, okay, I respect that, yeah, whatever. Sure. He said, let me walk you to your car. And I said, okay, perfect. So then I go and then I see a big fat ticket on my car. Oh, I'm, no. like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, was it worth it? And then at that point I was like, no, it really wasn't. This guy was yeah. not worth getting a ticket for. Turns out that they have really strict like parking yeah, like every, anything will get you a park like a ticket yeah, literally sure so sure. my wheel was just a little bit off on like the no white line thing. Way. and it said it on the ticket too you're like off parking like you were off the meter thing and i'm no like way. whatever he sees the ticket and then he's like oh damn that sucks and i'm like I i'm <laughs> done i'm so done whatever and then he has the nerve to ask me, can you give me a ride to my car? Oh, shit. And based on the patterns that you see here, you can already know my answer was going to be, surprisingly, yes, I'm going to yeah. give you a ride back yeah, to your car sure. because I'm still going to be nice. Again, yeah. I was 21 and... Full of optimism. Just yeah. Optimism. yeah. 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 So we go and I drive him to his car. I'm already upset. You can tell that I'm upset. I'm not having it with this guy. And so then I finally get there. I get to his car, leave him there. And then he won't get off my car. 
he won't. He's still like trying to make jokes and ha ha's and he he's and, and, and he's just like joking about it. And I'm in the steering wheel pissed. And then he's like, so this was a great date, huh? And then he does like that awkward thing to try to liven up the mood. Yeah. I was so mad. And I genuinely feel like I feel bad for what I'm about to tell you. But I was really upset about this whole thing of how it went that I looked at him and I was like, dude, just get out of my car. <laughs> like literally. Good for you though. Good for you. That's what, that's what you're supposed to do. He's not getting the hint and he's trying to make out and you're like, I'm not having it, bro. <laughs> Bad. So I, I get out of my car. And so then he was like, he literally, his mouth dropped like to the, his chest. Right. He was like, and he gets up and he like slams the door of my car and leaves. Oh man. Just to like wrap up this fantastic story. A year later, I go to that restaurant and guess who I see? No way. He's there. Oh, huh? On a date. Oh, he my God. Me. I completely forgot that he like existed and that we had a horrible date, but yeah. I went with my girlfriend and we were just having a great time and we were just having drinks. You know, she's my roommate. She's my bestie, whatever. I think we were celebrating her birthday. And so we go to the restaurant. <laughs> I'm sitting like this and he's sitting at your perspective, looking this way okay. in the same table we were sitting. Oh, I'm shit. not even no Oh, you're thinking is this poor girl? Oh my gosh. Really <laughs> my thought. So I see him and he sees me and we lock eyes. <laughs> and I go, look at my friend, I can't. And he got up so fast, he quit that day quick. He got up and then oh, he just, shit. I was like, oh. <laughs> You made two moments extremely awkward for him getting out of the car and his date. So I think you wanted the game that he taught you. <laughs> think so oh, man. i think so i think so because you weren't awkward about any stretch he was the one that was like oh my gosh have you like the height thing though the 511 to 54 like i've heard that more often than i'd like to admit that's crazy though have you have you run into that more often no because afterwards i i cut it with the dating apps oh, good and too. then i was like i I don't think I'm interested right now. I think I just want to focus on my career and yeah. I see the guy organically and I can do this and yeah, look up at yeah. heights. Then like, okay, this yeah. will work. Yeah. So. Yeah. So are you done with the, like, so since then, well, are you in a relationship now? I guess have you met somebody we call it in the wild? No, I mean, right now I am single and okay. I did meet someone in the wild. We lasted for about a year nice. and then you know, you start to really get to know the person after a year. Yeah. And we well, just had different perspectives. And sure. It, it sure, so, yeah. sure. Sure. Things don't work out. Man, that's crazy. Did that gun shy you? Like, like, were you done? Like, I think you said it. if you did, I apologize. Were you pretty much like, all right, I'm off the apps after crap like this? I tolerated two more dates with like other men. And uh -huh. then I was like, ah, now, now I've it. <laughs> Were, were they not as bad, obviously, but were they good? Was there a good and a bad in the other ones? Or were they both just like, man, I just can't do this. One of them was a frat guy. I oh, remember gosh. that. Yeah. So there was a lot of, yeah, man, if you want to come back to that. <laughs> and I'm like, huh? <laughs> no, man. Sweeping you oh, off your feet. <laughs> Very romantic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Back his house with the rest of the guys. Um, There was that one. And then. Oh, I remember. Um, I think the last date that really scared me, it was with this this guy I I matched with. Uh -huh. He had a very he he was the complete opposite of an athlete. He was kind uh -huh. of like a smart geek and I thought okay. it was I, I thought I thought I thought I just thought. So, I go on this date and it turns out he's like really intense and he has like this really deep voice and uh -huh. I we just don't have the chemistry. We didn't. Okay. So, I said, you know what, respectfully, like this is just the last one, right? Yeah. He messages me the following, we went for coffee, no worries. Okay. We went for a small coffee, nothing crazy. And then he messages me the day after. And I'm thinking, you know what? I don't owe him an explanation. I'm just gonna ghost him. Sure. So I do. Yeah. He messages me again. And I'm like, okay, he doesn't get the hint. So I'm like, you know what? Still ghosting, whatever. He puts me on blast. I'm talking. Yeah. 
women like you, I don't know who you think you are. You think that you're so good for everybody, but you're not. Da, 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 just like going off. And I'm like, Whoa. we went for coffee. Why are you getting so worked up about this? Whatever. Yeah. So I think maybe I hit a nerve, especially with like not responding. Yeah. There, I was like, I'm that right there was like, that's this borderline creepy. And this yeah. is borderline, like, I don't know what your problem is, but I didn't feel safe. So I was like, I'm done. Wow. I'm done. You, can, you never know who you're going to meet. So done. no, no, you don't. And like, there's so many different what things you can go through, kind of like you're talking about, like, all of a sudden you go out on date, eh, you weren't vibing. So you're like, all right, I'm not going to do it again. And then you see this dude probably go from his best behavior to his, you know, close to his worst behavior in a matter of hours. And you're just going to, yeah, good thing I avoided that one. That was a close one. Get me the hell out of here. That's some bullshit. Yeah. Honestly. Uh, yeah. So your friends though, I imagine they're out there. So do you kind of like, like you have a, some of your girlfriends, your best friends and stuff like that. And you talk about some of the stuff that you see, I imagine. Do they have like, uh, like does your story take the cake out of all of them so far? It does not, but I do have a positive story. I love One those two. Sorry to interrupt. No, it's okay. <sighs> One of my girlfriends, her name is Victoria. She is going to get married this summer with his, with her fiance, Louis. They met on the app Upward. Actually. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, I've so, heard of that uh, One. Two years ago. And the date she said, because he has a unique personality we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be really cute. Lewis does have a unique personality but okay. they clicked so well they meshed perfectly and they were in that heat of the moment they were looking for love and they were looking for marriage and so uh, a lot of the values they surprisingly matched and uh, they've been together ever since and now they're getting awesome. married and I'm going that's to the wedding awesome. Oh, good for you. That's awesome. I love to hear that. Cause like, <clears throat> I know everyone wants to hear the bad stories. I mean, that's just what's, oh my God, I can't believe that was out there, but there's gotta be some of that optimism out there. We've still got to instill some of that, at least a little bit. It's Cause like you can go through easily 50 to 75 dates before you find possibly the one, but even then there's so many levels. There is, do we get along? Do we vibe? Do we have good sex? Do we fight the same way and communicate the same way? all that stuff. And it takes so long to figure that stuff out. So I'm happy to hear when, you know, people get together and they get married from the apps too, because there is happy endings. I swear to God, there's happy endings. Yeah. There are. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, whatever it is that you are searching for, hopefully that you find it and you get there. I mean, I, I just appreciate, appreciate you coming on and sharing this story with me for sure. Thank you so much for having me. I hope that I was able to be of entertainment. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> I hope so. And I hope that other people can relate as well. And I wish everyone else the best of luck when it comes to dating, because right now it's rough, but remaining a positive attitude and you might click with the right one. Thank you for being along for the ride of Swipe, the Swipe Wrong podcast. Remember, everyday people telling everyday stories of the Swipe Right world. Uh, the show is uh, produced by Jay Pelham. He is the host of Pelham Place. Uh, so make sure to check that out. Also, I am uh, Chaos, the host of Chaotic Commentary. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, tell a friend about the pod. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, something that you want to share, please, please, we want to hear from everybody and get everybody's stories as much as we possibly can. Uh, email us at swipewrongpod at gmail.com. Uh, give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. Let us know if it's okay to call you back. 317-426-6616. Thanks for being along for the ride. And next week, uh, the saga continues. Swipe wrong. Swipe wrong.